It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tibbetts Physics. What is crappening? Today, we're going to talk about Snell's Law, which is a continuation of refraction. So let's go straight to the formula. According to Snell's Law, the index of refraction of material 1 times the sine of the angle relative to the normal is equal to the index of refraction of material 2 times the sine of that refracted angle relative to the normal. So n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Let's say that 1 is the incoming light ray or the incident light ray. 2 we'll define as the refracted ray. Oops. These could be interchangeable. We could say that 1 is the refracted light and 2 is the incoming. Based on the formula, it doesn't matter which one we choose. But for now, we'll say 1 is incoming, 2 is refracted. Then lastly, theta represents the angle. And it's relative to the normal. So angle relative to normal. What we're going to do next is take this formula, Snell's Law n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, and make some extra formulas with this. So the first thing we'll do is get our n's on one side and our sine of theta is on the other side. So that leaves us with n1 over n2 is going to be sine of theta 2 over the sine of theta 1. We saw from the previous video that the index of refraction is equal to C over V. So N1 will turn into C over V1 over N2 turns into C over V2. In this case, we can see that C, the speed of light in a vacuum, cancels out. So we're, we're left with 1 over V1 over 1 over V2. If we do some laws of division, fractions, that simplifies to V2 over V1. And then if we use the speed of light as if it were, were a wave, where V equals lambda F, V2 turns into lambda 2 F2, and V1 turns into lambda 1 F1. The frequencies stay the same when light enters a new medium, as does the color. So the frequencies cancel, and we're left with lambda 2 over lambda 1. If we were to put this in one clean formula, we could say that n1 over n2 is equal to v2 over v1, which is equals lambda 2 over lambda 1. Let's do a couple of practice problems together. The first one we'll do is number 4 from your reflection refraction homework. Number four says, find the angle of refraction of a ray of light passing from air into water at an incident angle of 30 degrees. Sketch your results. Let's sketch and label our picture first. So we'll draw our barrier, our normal perpendicular line. And we're going from air to water. So we'll look up the index refraction for air which is 1.00, that's in your reference table. We'll call that N1. 
and it goes into water. And N2 in our reference table is 1.33. And we're given that angle of incidence from air to water to be 30 degrees. So theta 1 is 30 degrees. And we want to find theta 2, the angle of refraction. It's going from a low to a high, 1.00 to 1.33, which means it's going to slow down which means the angle will decrease relative to 30 degrees relative to the normal. So why don't we start with Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. And we want to solve for theta 2. So we'll divide both sides by N2. So we have sine of theta 2 equals N1 sine of theta 1 all over n2. To find theta2 we have to take the inverse sign or second sign in our calculators. So theta2 is the inverse sign, sine to the negative 1, of everything on the right side. n1 sine theta1 all over n2. And from here we can just plug and chug. So theta2 is the inverse sine of n1, which is 1.00, sine of 30 degrees, all over n2, which is 1.33. Even though n1 is just 1, we still want to plug that value in because it's a physical quantity. And remember, the index for refraction doesn't have units, but the angle, 30 degrees, does have units. So we plug and chug, make sure our calculators are in degrees, and we get theta 2 to equal 22.1 degrees. Let's also do number 11 together. Number 11 reads, a light, a light ray traveling through corn oil at a speed of 2.04 times 10 to the 8th meters per second speeds up as it enters ethyl alcohol. What is the speed in ethyl alcohol? So it's going from corn to ethyl alcohol. So let's look up, let's call corn N1, corn oil, sorry. We'll look that up in our reference table, and N1 is 1.47. And we also know the speed in corn oil. That's given to us to be 2.04 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Oops. We can look up N2, ethyl alcohol, in our reference table. That gives us 1.36. And we want to find V2, what is the speed of light in ethyl alcohol. So we have a couple formulas we could use. If we look in our reference table, we have N1 over N2 equals V2 over V1. In this case, we want to solve for V2. We don't care about the lambda 2 over lambda 1 because we're not given it, nor are we finding it. Or we could also use n equals c over v. We know n for ethyl alcohol. We know c, the speed of light in a vacuum. We want to find v2, the speed of light in ethyl alcohol. Why don't we use this one, n equals c over v, because it requires a little bit less algebra. So first we'll do is get v by itself. We'll multiply both sides by V, and then divide both sides by N. So V is equal to C over N. In this case, we're looking at V2. So now we just plug and chug. C is the speed of light in a vacuum. That's 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All over N2, that's 1.36. Plug in our calculators and we get V2 to be 2.21 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The last thing we're going to look at is how does Snell's law really work? How does light know to bend at a certain angle and slow down at a certain speed when it goes from one medium to the next? To do this, we're going to look at Richard Feynman's quantum electrodynamics again and use an analogy to help us get a better picture. 
So like before, let's say we have a source of light. And then this time we're going to have some barrier that separates the two mediums. And below that source, on the other side, we'll have our detector. So let's start off with, or let's use the analogy of somebody that's in a pool and they have sunk to the bottom. That's the detector. And it's up to the source or the lifeguard to save them. Let's call our detector Squints and our lifeguard Wendy Peppercorn. Now she has multiple paths she could take while she's running in air and then going in the water. One path she could take is just go so she runs in the air, dives straight down so that her angle doesn't change, and goes straight for squints. Another path is she could run all the way along the pool and then dive straight down to reach squints. Or she could do the opposite just run straight down and then dive towards squints. And we could do an infinite amount of paths. The other one we could do is she runs, <coughs> excuse me, she runs along the pool, bends a little bit as she hits the water, and dives towards squints. And again, there's an infinite amount of paths. And just like the law of reflection, the outer ones on the left side have the same probability as the outer ones on the right side, they're going to continue canceling each other out until we get to n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So this law is based on the highest probability of light to travel from the source to the detector when it goes through at an angle from one medium to the next. And again it turns out that it's n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. See ya!